I'm for men. Uh, I really appreciate uh, being given uh, the opportunity to start off this morning. Maybe try to bring hope. Uh, try to bring hope, inspiration. Okay. Are you hearing me? No. Okay, I think uh, this will do. I really appreciate being offered the opportunity to start off this morning and uh, be part of the conference. As a person living with HIV, I will take you through uh, the journey of what I went through since I knew my HIV status in 1990. Early in my journey of living with HIV, I had to make decisions. Initially, I didn't take food seriously because as men, you know, sometimes I learned about um, food and um, I decided that how I needed to change my lifestyle because I used to uh, drink a lot. I used to not care so much about eating. And um, when I tested HIV positive, I decided that uh, this, would, uh, this needed to change. Recognizing that other men also needed uh, support. I came up with, uh, uh, together with a few friends, with a concept of uh, engaging men in HIV AIDS uh, activities involving men so that at least we could help other men cope. Most of the initiatives that were there during that time were focusing on women and children, which was okay. But we needed to bring men on board so that at least uh, they would be able to support women <coughs> and fight against HIV and AIDS. <laughs> Men within the organization resumed an advocacy role and they started to focus on issues that affected men. There are so many. And in fact, on realizing that the challenges men who are HIV positive face, we realized as an organization that we had a, a lot to deal with. The effects of illness, especially for men who test HIV positive, sometimes uh, weighed heavy on, uh, on the men who test HIV positive in so many ways. They are unable to be productive. They are unable to concentrate on actually supporting their families in so many ways. And this actually uh, needed a lot of our intervention to uh, to help men cope with the condition of being HIV positive. Throughout my work, I learned first hand about the influence of viable livelihoods in nutrition security and a healthy, a healthy lifestyle. From a male perspective, because like I was in a skills building yesterday, uh, where we were looking at the, uh, the nutritional uh, needs assessments, and uh, I, I, I realized that I knew very little about uh, some of the, the issues involved. And I think with that information, I'll be able to go back to my group and also transform. I maybe uh, try to engage men to take nutrition seriously. The majority of men who test HIV positive are unable to adjust and cope with the condition. Uh, and like women who, when they are tested and found to be HIV positive, they manage to cope. Uh, take up the challenges and continue on with life because of reasons so much known to women and that is their children and maybe other important reasons. Men do, do not want to be supported. I really do not want to be supported. And at times when you support a man, men tend to feel that it's like they are weak. And you know, we don't want to be seen as weak. We don't want to be seen as unable. 
we still want to maintain that uh, that image that we are able, even though we know within ourselves that we need support. In life, men do not take food seriously. I'd rather buy my colleagues' minds beer, but not food. I've seen it because I was there. You dash your colleague to actually support you in getting a meal, but they would rather buy you beer than food. Fear of discrimination also makes it difficult for men to disclose their HIV status, especially to their spouses. And it's, it becomes more so when they know that they will lose their status in society. And you find that a lot of influential people who test HIV positive do not want to be known that they are HIV positive. They do not want to associate with people living with <coughs> HIV and AIDS. And as a movement, we are trying to encourage and bring people closer from whatever walk of life. Because we know HIV does not discriminate. So we try to encourage people living with HIV and AIDS to be the champions of actually fighting stigma and discrimination. What can men do? I took it upon myself to challenge men to become responsible for their lives and for the lives of their families in providing for them and supporting them at all levels within uh, the domestic form and in whatever they did. I also saw the need of ch challenging traditional roles which at times expose men to risks. And as an organization, we try to engage men in looking at those traditionals and cultures that are supportive and also positive and uh, take them forward. But cultures and traditions that actually expose us to a lot of risks, we look at new ways of dealing with them.